All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Crazy Comedy, Humor, and Satire Podcast. This is episode number five of season one, which will air virtually on Sunday evening, August 18th, 2019. And I am Daniel D., your host. Thank you for joining me on another edition of this podcast. Uh, so, what's new with you guys? What's that? Nothing? Nothing's new? Okay, well then, let's just talk about me. Alright, well, um, let's move right along, talk about me. Uh, um, uh, I got a suggestion for how to make the 2020 presidential election more interesting, more entertaining, and more productive. What's that? Uh, just have, in- instead of the states uh, you know, running the elections, have the WWE formerly known as the WWF, uh, run the presidential election in 2020. I think it would be more, it would get better ratings, uh, more people would be involved, more people may educate themselves on the relevant issues, right? If they're uh, wrestling, you know, then people may uh, research, you know, different people's uh, techniques or, you know, get into the story a little bit more. I mean, it's basically a big soap opera reality TV show now, so why not, you know? It's already a joke. We got a reality TV star as the president, and we got a circus uh, going on on the left for the most part. Um, so, well, it couldn't be much worse than it is. I think with the uh, the squad on the left, the ultra left, um, they they need like to get somebody like I think what's his name, Vince McMahon, the uh, head of the WWE. They need to get him, or maybe. Uh, Dana White from the UFC. Somebody like that to be their manager, basically. You know, or Don King. Don King knew how to promote a fight, right? So, um, any somebody like Don King or, uh, Vince McMahon as their, um, manager. And the four members of the squad need to get together and, uh, form a wrestling tag team, you know? And they need to challenge Trump to a cage match. I think that would be great. I mean, for one thing, they may actually win over some of Trump's supporters. Because the one thing that Trump supporters seem to understand is power, you know, like just the the projection of power, you know, like uh, uh, so-and-so is a very bad man. We're going to build a, it's going to be a great wall. Uh, It will be fire and fury. They will regret it. You know, these simple phrases that just speak like, I'm better, I'm better than you. You're worse than me. I'll bury you, you know. Um, I mean, but if they get in on it, they, you know, there's four of them. They're young, so they would have Trump by, you know, 30, 40 years. I don't know how Trump's getting old at this point. Um, you know, and they challenge him and maybe like three other members of his administration, right? Like a four-on-four kind of ta- wrestling tag team. You know, so Trump's got the administration. And then um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ayanna Presley and uh, there's a couple of others whose names presently elude me let's see i could google the squad real quick see who's who on the squad but anyway what they need to do they need to form a wwe tag team challenge trump on twitter and everywhere else on social media you know put these phrases out there like gonna whoop your ass trump you know and say like um yeah trump likes to you know i can't i'm gonna do a bad female voice because it's not gonna sound like anything but can just imagine uh, AOC. You down with AOC? Yeah, you know me. Sorry, I can't rap either. Um, you're gonna see, um, you know. So anyway, the squad. Let me look this up on Google real quick. If you don't know, just ask Google. They know everything about you, everything about me, and everything about the squad. All right, Wikipedia. Well. If you don't know where to go, ask Wikipedia or Google. All right. The Squad is an informal political grouping of four congresswomen elected in the 2018 blah, 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 made up of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, Ilhan Omar of Minnesota, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, and Rashida Tlaib of Michigan. All are women of color. All right. So. No albinos in this group. They all have some color, some pigmentation. Okay, all the women of color under all the women of color under forty six. I thought they were younger than that. Well, I guess the oldest is forty six or forty five. 
and have been placed. All right. Anyway, so this talks about them. Okay, so this is who they are. The colloquial use of the word squad arose from the East Coast hip hop culture. All right, that's cool. So I'm learning a little bit looking at Wikipedia about the squad. So here's the thing. The squad, they just get matching outfits, you know, like, um, you know, and they just put themselves out there. Like, we're going to whoop Trump's ass, you know, and challenge him to get in, uh, you know, like a cage match or something like that, or at least get in the ring, you know, and then do classic WWE shit, you know, like uh, get Trump and like three of his guys to represent the administration, maybe Trump, Pence, Mitch McConnell, and one other old white guy. And uh, they just go at it, you know. And they, I mean, it would be awesome, you know. I, I think that with the, the Trump, Pence, and uh, Mitch McConnell being old, like these four women should be able to win, you know. They should be able to whoop Trump's ass, basically. And that would, I think, win them a lot of support. It would add probably uh, people on the right, you know, conservatives would probably respect them for that, you know. Because people, you know, you start getting into economics arguments. People just hear little buzzwords. Socialist. Oh, my God. You know, it's like Red Scare. And they don't hear what the rest of you have, to, you know, what the rest of your proposals are. You just say, Green New Deal. Green? That sounds suspicious to me. Anti-American. Um, so, anyway. But they understand kicking people's asses. They understand insult comedy, which is what Trump does. Um they following in the footsteps of like Don Rickles and people like that. Trump just gets up there and delivers these one-liners insulting people, you know, so they just, you know, it, it, okay, Michelle Obama set. They go low, we go high. Well, which they haven't really gone high on the left, but the squad, I think they go pretty high. They seem to be pretty professional about uh, how they conduct themselves, but they need to go low. That's the thing. Trump goes low. You go lower. All right. So Trump wants to go low. You say, all right, motherfucker, you go low. I see you low and I lower you 20. And, um, you know, and then you get, just bring it. I mean, you know, we're already in the basement, in the toilet, you know, when it comes to American political discourse. So why not just take it all the way down? Just have a WWE match and they could call themselves the, if, you know, the squad or how about this? The bomb squad, right? And they say, you know, this is like their catchphrase. They're like AOC and Ayanna Presley and Ilan Omar, Omar. And, um, I forget the other. Tlaib of Michigan. Yeah, they just call themselves the Bomb Squad, and they say we're gonna blow this shit up. 2020. You know, they. I think they should just start running for president. Just try. It's not too late. The, to, you know, um, they. And then anything that Trump says is is like the Bomb Squad is blowing this shit up. You know, and they they challenge Trump to a cage match. It would be on pay per view. It would get. I mean, it would make the McGregor uh, uh, Mayweather fight look like you know nothing it was like a schoolyard brawl you know It'd be like this would be the biggest thing of all time the fight of the century right so i mean i think they should do it i think don king if he's still around could make some money promoting it or vince mcmahon or one of those uh people with no um compunction and lots of uh cojones or whatever you know like People with a lot of bravado, but not a lot of brains. Yeah, like, well, I'm just kidding about that. Actually, you got to be pretty smart to do what Don King or Vince McMahon do, you know, the way they promote these fights. It, pretty clever. But anyway, all right, so that's my two cents. What would make the uh, election and the 2020 presidential race more interesting is if we turned it into a WWE SmackDown. And uh, anyway... All right, so what else happened this week? I had to take a sick day. Uh, my daughter was sick, running a fever, had to keep her home from school. And I'm very blessed to have a job where I do get sick time. Um, so, uh, but it's something you discover as a parent, man, is that uh, daycares and elementary schools are basically germ exchanges. You know, like uh, if you're a germ and you want a home, you know, just hang out at a school or a daycare and some kid will pick you up. Because they, kids just go there, they they don't, they, one, young children have terrible, terrible, terrible hygiene. You know, they tend to leak a lot when they're sick and then they don't wash their hands much. They like to touch their face and put things in their mouths. Well, especially when they're really young. But even when they're older, you know, um, kids are gross. They pick their nose. 
Um, not that adults don't pick their nose either, but at least we know to do it on the sly when no one's looking and to wash our hands. Like kids don't care. They'll pick their nose uh, with you staring right at them and then wipe it in plain view on the desk or on somebody else or whatever. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyway, I guess a good thing about that, though, is the immune system does seem to need challenges, you know. I mean, if you protect your kids too much and they never develop their immune system, then they get all these crazy allergies. At least that's my limited understanding of how that works. So, I figured, uh, you know, it's probably good that she got sick now. Uh, her immune system will be stronger for it. But I got a little bit of time off work because that's what I was kind of, Kind of nice. Unfortunately, my daughter had to feel bad and be ill for that to happen. But uh, look at the bright side. All right. Um, also, another crazy thing that I saw uh, this week. I saw the biggest breast on a woman I'd ever seen in my life. No, she wasn't naked. She was walking down the street. And it, it, normally, you know, for a man to notice a woman's breast and want to look at them, and talk about them, it's like something sexual because, you know, maybe you have a breast fetish or you look at a woman's behind and, you know, she's got a nice ass or whatever. Um, in this case, it was more like the way you would want to look at somebody who had three heads. You'd be like, holy shit, i never seen anybody with three heads before. That is fucking crazy. Like, do these heads argue about which way they're going to go? You know, like, um, if there's only one hat, and three heads, you know, do the heads argue among themselves about who's going to wear the hat? You know, I mean, those are the kind of things that I would think if I saw a man walking down the street with three heads, you know. I would kind of do a double take, like, is this shit for real? Holy shit, he's actually got three fucking heads. Um, You know, so anyway, that's kind of the way I thought about it. I was like, I see this woman walking down the street, and she has the biggest breasts. Like, it's unnatural. I mean, it's possible... It's possible. Actually, they probably were natural because I think if you had a boob job, you would make it look better than this. Like she looked at first, it looked like she had a big pot belly, you know, because the it start her it it started to go the the curve outward like the pot belly, it's, but it, except that it started at her chest, which is how I knew they were breasts, and it was segmented in the middle. So unless she had like a liposuction surgery that went horribly wrong and left this deep gash in the middle of her abdomen where they sucked out some of the fat and then left fat on the sides. Or unless she had two pot bellies, maybe if a person could have two heads, you know, they, a person could have two bellies. You know, cows have like six, seven, I don't know how many bell stomachs a cow has. Maybe this woman had two stomachs. Maybe she had to chew the cud, you know. I don't know. But no, it, it, it was two breasts and it was like they hung down to her waist and they just kind of looked like two big pot bellies that had been split in half, you know. So anyway, I, you know, it's one of those things I saw, and it's like not again, not in a sexual way, but just you know, like a, I can't believe this shit is for real kind of way. I was like, you know, wanted to ask her, uh, which of course I didn't. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's surely a good thing that I didn't. Uh, but I wanted to ask her, you know, like. Uh, are, is, is that for real? Like, are you, are you just wearing a costume? Is this, you know, this is your natural, like, this is your body. This isn't like a, I don't know, some kind of special effects. Like, I'm actually seeing somebody with breasts this big. Like, you know, um, you know, maybe ask her if she worked in porn. Because you want to think that if you had breasts that abnormally, freakishly huge, you would do something with them. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's a career in pornography right there. You know, if you had breasts that that size, because these things, I mean, it was like, and it, and they probably she probably would do well in porn for the same reason that I was like, people would be like looking at it not just because they're horny, but just because they're like, I can't believe that it's that fucking big, like, oh my gosh, you know. Anyway, like surely her, uh, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll get off of that subject, but it was just wild, you know, to see, you know, it's like, you know. Like, that's just, that's just insane. I mean, there were, each of her breasts were, like, the size of, you take a big fat guy with a beer belly, like, each of them was that. So, she had two fucking beer bellies on her chest, hanging down, bouncing around her waist, you know. Oh, my gosh, you know. Like, she must have some really strong back muscles to, you know, walk around with a decent posture in spite 
of having that much weight, you know, hanging down from her chest. That'd be, I don't know, that's pretty wild. Anyway, um, all right, so on the show tonight, got a new thing. We're going to have a segment called Dear Krabby, in which Crabigail Van Buren will... Um, read and answer an email that I got, uh, somebody asking for relationship advice. Uh, I came to the right place. Um, and just to let you know, if you do, uh, want my advice on anything, or if you have hate mail you want to send, uh, you can, uh, email me at danield.crazycomedyhumor at gmail.com. No, wait a minute. That's wrong. It's danield.crazycomedy at gmail.com. All right, I'm going to edit this last part out because I gave you the wrong email address. All right, so just ignore the first two email addresses I said. It's danield.crazycomedy at gmail.com. That is my email address if you want to reach out to me with any uh, comments, concerns, or good old-fashioned hate mail. I always love getting hate mail because I'm slightly masochistic, so I'm a, uh, you know, kind of get off on that shit when you tear me down um, about how lousy my show is. All right, so here it is, the letter, and uh, let me bring on Dear Krabby. All right, now, I'm uh, going to read this letter that I got. It says, Dear Krabby, my husband started complaining that I have gained too much weight. He keeps saying, bitch. Why don't you start exercising and stop eating so many cookies? And I said to him, uh, but I have so little time to exercise after I work two jobs because you lost your job and you sit around and play video games all day and I got to work and I come home and I got to make the food for the kids and wash the dishes and look at their homework with them, and get them ready for bed, and get them up in the morning, and get them to school, because you are so, uh, you know, spending so much time looking at the help on the dads, and not really doing much of anything, uh, but I'm so stressed out, because he is without work now, it's been a year, and all he does is complain, and he insults me, and tells me that I need to lose weight, and start exercising with him. I don't think it's fair. Dear Krabby, what do I do? Well, thank you for asking, and I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to commit suicide. That's right. I mean, life is hard, and then you die. And so, in my opinion, why do all the hard shit when you're just going to die anyway? So, just go ahead and kill yourself. He upset because you gain all this weight, but if you commit suicide and you die, then you will lose a lot of weight. That tends to happen when people die. They lose a lot of weight. So I would suggest that you just kill yourself. That's terrible. How can you suggest such a thing? Well, she doesn't have to listen to me, but she wanted my opinion. And I'm, I personally think that uh, she sounds like she's got a bad life. I mean, she got a piece of shit for her husband. She's overweight. She's all stressed out. Fuck it. Why not just kill herself? Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe that I would have. Um, all right. This is the last time I do this bit with you, Crabigail Van Buren. Well, she just, can I just say in my defense that I mean, suicide is a viable option. I mean, uh, put people out of their misery, right? Oh, my God. Get get the fuck out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I really apologize about that. I certainly don't support suicide at all. Uh, as I've heard it said, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Um, but then again, uh, you know, there's a certain logic to that. Okay, I won't. Uh, let's just move on to something more upbeat. Um, all right. I got a series of jokes for you guys. Uh, I hope you're ready for it. I'm going to be in summertime at all. All right. I need, uh, some, I need an Ed McMahon or Andy Richter or somebody like that, a sidekick of sorts that I could have when I tell my jokes. 
Um, all right. So I'll just do both parts. It's so hot here in Alabama. It's so hot. How hot is it? <laughs> it's so hot that the devil announced hell will be opening a regional office here in Birmingham. Oh, oh, oh. That's so funny, sir. All right. That's not very good. Oh, I forgot. I got a little rim shot. All right. Let me try that again. It's so hot here in Alabama. How hot is it? It's so hot that the devil announced hell will be opening a regional office in Birmingham next week. Oh, okay, that wasn't very good. All right, let's try this other one. Are you ready? It's so hot here in Alabama. It's so hot that you can't fry an egg on the sidewalk because it will burn up. You have to fry it on the grass instead. Boom. Got to fry the egg on the grass. The sidewalk is too freaking hot. All right. And now, last but not least, it's so hot here in Alabama. It's so hot that the Alabama Department of Public Health is telling black people to put on sunscreen. Oh, uh, that's probably actually a good thing. I think, well, I remember when I was in the Army, they would pass out sunscreen and, like, uh, some of my black fellow soldiers would be saying like what the fuck i ain't never worn sunscreen a day in my life why the hell are you giving me this shit um so then they would give me their sunscreen because my fair european complexion burns the fuck up outside uh and that leads me to another point all right the sun is racist Yes, you heard me. The sun is fucking racist. Look, every day the sun gives people cancer. Who does it give cancer to? All people generally? No! Does it give cancer to Asians? No! Does it give cancer to Africans? No! Does it give cancer to Mexicans? No! Who does it give cancer to? To white motherfucking people. Cracker ass crackers. That's who it gives cancer to. That sun is racist, and I think we need to boycott the motherfucking sun because it's giving us skin cancer to us white people. I mean, come on, man. Fucking sun. Good gosh. Can't believe it. That is how you know that God is not white. Like us. Uh, <laughs> of course, it's kind of stupid to even think about God having skin color, but, uh, but uh, that's how you know God is not white. Why? Because he created the so center of our solar system, a racist fucking star that is trying to kill the fucking white people. Motherfucking son. All right. Moving right along. I got on my show today a man who is a little out there to the right, a little far to the right. He makes Trump look like a liberal. He makes Mitch McConnell look like a communist. He makes, um, I don't know who else is out there that's crazy off to the right. He makes Fox News look like the Pravda, you know, from Soviet Russia. Uh, anyway, this guy's Ronnie Champ. You can check him out on www.ronniechamp.com for his crazy ass opinions. He's also written a few books that are available on Amazon. Uh, welcome to the show, please. Ronnie Champ! Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My name is Ronnie Champ. As the host of the program, I already told you, and I would just like to take this opportunity to share a few words. Uh, first of all, I would just like to say what an honor and a privilege it is for Daniel D. to have me, a person of my stature and caliber, on his podcast. So I hope he really appreciates it. Second of all, I would just like to say that uh, you should read my books. My books are available on Amazon. I've written a book about um, how to manage like Donald Trump. If uh, you want to, if you, let's just say, you don't have much talent, much people skills, but you are a good old boy, what is known as a good old boy in the South, you're a dickhead, you like to fuck people over, and you like to uh, move on women like bitches, then uh, 
This book is for you. It will teach you how to run your organization quite well, quite profitably, and for you to make a lot of money and get a lot of fame, even though you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So, uh, if you want to learn how to manage like Trump, read my book. It's called Mismanagement is in a Heart. It is available on Amazon. Uh, I also have another book. It's available on Amazon as well. It is called, uh... How to Win Girlfriends and Dominate People. It's modeled after my own life. Um, I teach you all the steps that I take to uh, dominate people and to have plenty of bitches in my stable at all times. Oh, that's uh, great, Ronnie. Thank you for sharing that uh, wisdom with us. Uh, now, what do you think about the 2020 presidential election? Yeah, I think Trump is going to win that shit. Why do I think that? Because Trump is a dick, and the Democrats are all pussies, and most Americans are pussies. And you know what happens to uh, pussies? They get fucked. You know what happens to dicks? They do the fucking. So you you can take that to the bank. Trump is going to fuck the Democrats. He's going to fuck uh, most Americans. Uh, they're going to get fucked, just like they did in 2016. And uh, that's how it's going to go down. Okay, well, uh, any hope for the people who uh, you call pussies for them not to get fucked by Trump? Yeah, uh, I think basically if they learn how to conduct themselves like prostitutes, uh, prostitutes do a pretty good job. Even though they get fucked, they get paid. And uh, that's a problem uh, with, with a lot of Americans. They get fucked, but they don't get paid. Trump knows how to fuck people, and he knows how to get paid. That's why America needs a man like him in the Oval Office. Why? Well, do you want uh, America to be a pussy in the world, getting fucked? Or you want America to be a dick in the world, doing the fucking? That's what I'm talking about. America needs to fuck other countries over for us to maintain our status as the top dog in the world's pecking order. And Trump is a dick, so he will make sure that that happens. Oh, man. So, that's it. There's no hope for American, uh, you know... What about this idea, you know, like uh, Joe Biden said that, you know, there used to be that even if people disagreed with each other, they could work together. Like he said that he worked with people he didn't like, the segregationists in his party, and he would, um, or the former segregationists, you know, and they would work together to get things done in the Senate. Do you think there's any possibility we can get back to a, a point like that? <laughs> yeah, Biden wants to work with segregationists. What a dumbass. He would even say that. I mean, I know what he means, but uh, people in America, you know, they don't want... If there's an argument that has more than one premise to it, they lose focus and they just respond to insults and attacks. And so Biden is a, is a dumbass, obviously. I think Kamala Harris, instead of talking trash, should have just walked over to him and smacked him in the face. I think that would have been just as effective and would have saved her all those words that she had to say. And uh, then Pete Buttigieg could have just walked over and, uh, you know, fucked him up the ass. And then that way, uh, Joe Biden would have been shown to be the punk ass bitch that he is. And then uh, the Democrats would have got rid of him, which is what they seem to want to do. Um, then, uh, Kamala Harris and Pete Boudier uh, could, uh, you know, engaged in some kind of fisticuffs on the stage. Um, you know, cause nobody cares about any of the other people in that party. Uh, there is Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, and, uh, they both, both basically represent the same demographic, the people who are pissed off at the banks. And, um, you know, so it's going to come down to one of those four, I think, personally. But like I said, at the end of the day, Trump is the biggest dick of all. And so he's going to fuck whoever it is the Democrats wind up putting against him. Trump will just bend that person over and fuck him. And uh, so maybe it would be a good thing if Pete Buttigieg uh, was to be the Democratic nominee. Because he would probably enjoy that the most, getting fucked by Trump. Um Okay, so enough uh, depressing details about and opinions about the 2020 presidential election here in America. What do you think about uh, the recent um, reports that, you know, there's these warning signs of a, of a pending recession, you know, because of um, maybe because of the trade war between the U.S. and China, China devaluing its currency and there being, you know, the effect of these tariffs and, um, you know, as well as the, the, the looming uh 
potential Brexit, which is supposed to happen. It was supposed to be happening for, I guess, what, the last, like, four years, five years. Still hasn't happened yet, but, um, anyway, what do you think about that? Do you think that, uh, the end is near for the, for the, the boom times in our economy? Well, let me just say this. I have my uh bug out bag ready to go i'm a prepper and i believe that the end is near i got uh you know uh pre-1965 coins stashed in my bug out bag i got a a uh condo deep inside the earth in a former nuclear uh warhead uh facility in the middle of kansas uh, at an undisclosed location, so I really don't give a fuck. I'm going to be all right. I'm just hoping, uh, because uh, when the shit hits the fan and the nukes start flying, uh, I and a handful of people who are smart like me, spending our money on doomsday shit, are going to be ready, and we're going to go down in the earth, and we're going to live out the rest of our lives underground, and our children will ri- live out the rest of their lives underground, and our grandchildren will live out most of their lives underground, and then our great grandchildren, uh, with their, with our grandchildren as their parents, will emerge probably about 150 years from now, and uh, they will have the whole earth to themselves. No more idiots. No more liberals. None of that shit. So I'm just rooting for Armageddon. Okay, well there you have it, folks. Ronnie Champ and his opinions about the end of the world and the 2020 presidential election. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Champ, for being on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, as I said, your audience, if they want to educate themselves about how to be a great man like me, they can read my books. I have uh, my book, How to Win Girlfriends and Dominate People, um, is uh, available for, on Amazon as an ebook or in print, or it's also a pay, uh, an audio book, uh, which also is available on iTunes. Uh, so again, if you want to learn how to treat uh, women like hoes, how to have lots of bitches in your stable, how to, um, you know, how to kick ass and take names and keep it real 24-24, then uh, read my book. Uh, and you can also visit my website for more information at www.ronandchamp.com. Thank you very much, folks. All right. Thank you, Mr. Champ. Uh, well, folks, that's it for uh, this week's episode of the Crazy Comedy, Humor, and Satire podcast. I'm Daniel D. This episode is airing virtually or available for download Sunday, August 18th, 2019. See you all next week. Have a great uh, week, and I hope and pray that Ronnie Champ's crazy-ass predictions don't come to pass. But in some ways, there's enough crazy people out there. I'm afraid that uh, they might. Anyway, uh, have a great week. God bless you all. Adios. Hasta luego, motherfuckers. Boom, 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 boom.